Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to cover the hiring process for the railroad. I hired on with BNSF, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Every railroad is going to be different in how they hire. So just kind of take this as a, you know, just a guideline and just my personal experience with one company getting hired on. Um, just know that every experience is going to be different. Hey guys, what's up? So, had uh, some people that I know that have decided they're gonna apply to the railroad. It's iron season for a lot of railroads out there, so I figured I'd put together a little thing, and uh, we're gonna cover application process, interview process, hiring process, on-the-job training, um, things like that. All right, for the very first thing, if you wanna work for the railroad, you gotta apply to the railroad figure out which one you want to do. Do you want to do a class one, which is like CSX, UP, NS, KCS, BNSF, that kind of thing. Or is it class three, which you'll typically find uh, doing industry jobs, things like that. Typically, it's a local thing. Some are a little bit bigger, not quite class one status, but still bigger railroads. Um, figure out what you want to do. Most applications are done online. So just get on there, do some Googling find what you need to know and apply. So typically, like with BNSF, after you apply and you submit your resume, which I highly encourage you to do, you're gonna do an assessment. These are, if you've ever been in the military, it's like an ASVAB, it's a personality assessment, basic knowledge, that kind of deal. Um, I will give everyone a tip take these assessments as if you were a manager for that company. What I mean by that is like BNSF's motto is every accident is preventable. Remember that if you're applying to BNSF. So a lot of questions are safety oriented. How would you handle this, this situation? How would you handle this interaction with this person? That kind of thing. Not overly complicated, don't overthink it, be honest, and good luck. All right, so if you've applied, passed your assessment, and you've made it to the interview process, um, which for me took, I wanna say somewhere around two, three weeks to finally hear back from the company. Um, so, got an email saying show up on this day, prepare, uh, set aside pretty much the majority of the day for this entire process. So showed up to this hotel at a conference room. There's probably, oh God, there's at least a hundred of us in there. Uh, got there and we sat down, listened to a presentation. They kind of had some breakfast snack stuff set out. And then they told us we would be doing uh, interviews with a person from Amarillo and a person from HR. And then at the same time, they would be doing drug test. I don't know why people freak out about drug test. It's commonplace these days. So if you're applying to any railroad, their drug and alcohol regulations they have to abide by are pretty strict set out by the FRA. So if you're applying to a railroad, expect at minimum a urinalysis test 
Some of them, like BNSF, have been known to do hair follicle tests. So if you're out there doing drugs, you ain't going to pass this part of the interview. So don't even bother. Um, but that's not a thing for you. Keep going. So we did our little, you know, uh, presentation thing. Uh, that ended. And then they started calling people back for interviews. And then uh, that was pretty straightforward, basic set of questions. Why do you think you're a good fit for this job? Why do you want this job? Have you ever worked with heavy machinery? You ever worked on the railroad? What do you know about the railroad? That kind of deal. Pretty straightforward questions. And we just kind of sat around and talked for a minute. And that was it. Then after the interview part was done, went across the hallway, put my name in line to do the drug test and did the drug test and left. Um, a week later, they sent out the emails. So there's three emails from BNSF you can get. The rejection letter. Thanks for your interest, but you haven't been selected at this time. You get the uh, alternate letter, which is what I got, saying you've been selected as an alternate. If somebody drops out, doesn't qualify, um, whatever, you'll, you'll be called. I don't know how many people that letter was sent to, but I was one of them. And then the following Monday, a week later, so two weeks total, I got the letter of conditional job offer saying, congratulations, you've been selected to be an employee of BNSF. Let's start the hiring process. This is where it gets fun. Thankfully, okay. So when I submitted my application, I did submit a resume, which I think was required. They pulled a lot of my information for this background check, which is a criminal and work history and reference background check. They pulled most of that already from my resume. So I had to go fill in some gaps and get the dates as, as exact as I could. Um, and this was honestly the biggest pain in the ass. So got all that together, sent it in. I, uh, at the same time, set up the appointment to do my medical assessment and then um, then it was a waiting game. I got everything submitted. Here we go. Heard back from the background people and they sent me another list of things to go do and some things they found in discrepancies with my dates. I put on my work history. Not a big deal except for turned into a huge pain in the butt. Um, I had to send in W-4s, my tax returns. I had to send in a lot of pay stubs verifying that I was employed by this company if they could not call and verify employment with somebody you put down. Um, and they also called and verified references. Not really sure what they said during that part, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I didn't have any issue with the references. So that whole process with the background, criminal background, the tax documents, all that, took me just about three weeks to finally make those guys happy. Um, big pain in my butt. Then the medical stuff, they set you up to go do an eye and hearing test and a basic physical assessment. And then based off that assessment, they get back to you on whether or not you need to do a sleep study or anything else. Um, be honest about your medical history guys. They typically find out about it. Um, so just be honest about it. It's not a big deal. Like they had me go do a sleep study and uh, a few other things like that, uh, which all came back fine. Uh, they did want me on a CPAP, but whatever. Um, it's not that big of a deal. I've actually found it pretty beneficial, but it's for a whole other topic. So after I got all that submitted, about another week went by and I got an email saying, congratulations, you passed. Class starts on this date at this location, be there. So it's pretty straightforward, but give yourself plenty of time. Um, my suggestions. If you get accepted, already have your, you know, like the past five or so years of tax returns uh, in a PDF format. You know, if you've hung on to your pay stubs, uh, 
try to get those scanned in PDF format. It makes life a lot easier. Make sure your work history is as accurate as possible and you've got a good contact number for these guys to call around. Uh, if I had known that ahead of time, I don't think this process would have been as chaotic as, as, as what it was. All right, so been hired. It's first day of class. You know, for me, joining BNSF, didn't really know what to expect. They said show up in boots, jeans, t-shirt, no shorts, no flip-flops, you know, working at the railroad. I'd hope not, but I've seen stranger things in previous jobs. So, first day of class, roll in there. Not that big of a deal. Um, hi, welcome to BNSF. We heard from the terminal superintendent. We got to meet our instructors. Uh, got to meet the train masters. And we got our first set of equipment, uh, which was our lantern, radios, iPad, G-Core book. That also had uh, some other materials in there. Um, switch keys. And a couple other little trinkets. Oh, air gauge. Those kind of things. Those things right there are kind of considered your standard. Lantern, radio, switch keys, safety vest, gloves. Good to go. Then we got our vouchers to go get our boots. So pretty much day one was set up. So day two and beyond for the classroom section was essentially death by PowerPoint. Welcome to the railroad. Here's how we do things. Here's the rules. I'll tell you what, there's a lot more rules than what I was expecting to be there. A lot more in-depth stuff. So initially it's a huge learning curve if you haven't ever done anything with the railroad. Um, a lot of information overload. So just get, get ready for that. It sucks. Everybody says it sucks, but you know, in the 13 weeks for our training, had a lot of fun. So the first several weeks are, um, first, I want to say two weeks were classroom. Then we did nine weeks or eight weeks of on the job training. So we're out there on the trains, we're doing road runs, we're doing yard, we're doing road switchers, we're doing locals, we're doing everything. Um, very fast paced. Come in, do your job, get to the way from home terminal, jump on the next train you can to come back um, and do it all over again. If you're doing it right, you're going to be dog ass tired. Uh, if you're doing it wrong, you're not going to get a lot of trips in there. I would highly recommend get as many trips as you can because when class is over with, you don't have that safety net of being a student anymore. You're instantly on probation at that point. Um, so we did, you know, those first eight weeks, seven or eight weeks or something like that. Come back to class for a week, go out for another two weeks. And then the last week was, um, was testing, getting ready going over more rules, what we've learned, that kind of thing. So, uh, then at the end of it all, our final test. Test over signals, um, the G core, the general code of operating rules, uh, air brick train handling, system special instructions, hazmat, um, company policies, that kind of deal. And if you pass, you get your fancy little FRA card from the company. Um, if you don't, typically they give you some other chances and some re remediation to pass, but there there is a limit in which you either pass or you don't. So study, it's, it's a lot to take in. So as you do the job more, you learn it, it all starts clicking and making sense, but if you don't put forth the effort, you're not gonna pass. Hey guys, thanks for coming by the channel. Hope you enjoyed our little video. I know it's kind of a down and dirty of the applying, hiring, and OJT. Um, we're planning on bringing you a lot more stuff here in the future. Hope 
some of this has helped you guys. And if you do make the decision to apply to a railroad, good luck. It can be a very rewarding and fun and enjoyable career. It's what you make of it. Um, despite union politics, company politics, all that stuff that's easy to get wrapped up in. This is a good job if you make it one. It's all in your hands. Uh, it's, it's what you make of it. Uh, my wife and I personally enjoy it. Uh, we get, enjoy getting to travel around full time in our RV. It's a blast. So, guys, give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us a message down below, and keep on traveling. Thanks.